Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my 2024 luxury wish list. And I want to specify that this is just a list of items that I want as of the beginning of 2024. Not necessarily all of the items that I foresee myself getting this year, especially for the jewelry portion of this video. There are definitely some pieces there that I know for sure I'm not going to be getting this year. It's more of like a long-term wish list type of thing but at the same time there are some items i'm going to be talking about that i will be unboxing very shortly here on my channel so stay tuned for that and of course if you haven't already subscribed to my channel make sure you do subscribe so you don't miss out on those unboxings so i'm going to start with handbags first and at the very top of my handbag wish list is the louis vuitton side trunk in the pm size in the monogram canvas and basically once the this bag got released I went to try it on in stores because I was so excited so looking forward to this bag I had tried on the MM size um, last year it was kind of like the bag that made me fall back in love with Louis Vuitton should I say I was like ever really in love with it I'm not sure but it kind of got me to looking at Louis Vuitton again um, it was the side trunk MM um, but that bag was just a little bit too big for me so when they released the pm size or even when news about it first came out i was so excited so i tried it on right after it was released and yeah i love it so that is the first bag on my wish list the second one since we're talking about louis vuitton is the capucines mini there was this one Capucines mini that I tried to add to my collection last year. It was kind of like somewhat of a huge ordeal, but it didn't end up in my collection. But I think that was so gorgeous. Um, so I've been kind of trying to find one that I loved to that same extent um, for me to purchase. And I think I found it, except this is kind of like way more special than that one. So it costs significantly more. It's basically one um, that has all these beading that makes it look like there's some type of cherry blossom pattern throughout it. It's so stunning, but the price is so high. It's, I believe, nine thousand one hundred fifty us dollars if i remember the price correctly when i looked at um, my sales associates ipad i think it said it was nine thousand one hundred fifty us dollars that is so incredibly expensive the one that i tried to buy last year i believe was only six thousand three hundred fifty so it's close to like a three thousand dollar difference but yeah if i could get my hands or actually i should say if i could justify spending $9,000 on this bag, I would not feel bad about not getting last year's version anymore. But yeah, it's just so expensive and it's a white bag and how often would I really wear it? But it's just so gorgeous. Like you guys tell me, I don't have any really like super um, special bags in my collection, I believe. Um, and this kind of would be like the only one. So I don't know. Is it worth it to have one of that type of bag in your collection? But even if I don't end up getting that, I am still going to be on the lookout for a Capucines this year or for as long as it takes me to find one that I truly, truly love, I'm going to want to add a Capucines mini to my collection. Moving on to Chanel. Um, funny enough, I think this is also like a very special type of bag in a different way. So for the 22S um, runway show that they did, they showed this camera bag that actually looked like a camera and I love it. I just think it's a really fun and playful bag without being totally out there um, and I can see myself wearing that. If I were to get it, I would probably get the black one. I love the white one the most, but I'm afraid of it basically yellowing over time. Color transfer, no problem. I'm used to, you know, being careful with my light color bags anyway, so I'm not worried about color transfer. It's more so that, you know, 
it might yellow over time. I just know if that were to happen, I would regret not getting the black one. But then like, I have so many black bags and black is black. So there's no variation to that color. I guess we'll have to see when the collection comes out. Um, that seems to be kind of like one of the standout pieces from that show anyway. So who knows, maybe the VIPs will snatch it all up anyways and I won't even have to make this decision. And the last bag on my wish list is from Fendi. So it's the mini baguette. I don't really have like any specific colors in mind. I do for certain know that I want one of the canvas ones, unless there's any special collabs that come out um, and they do like a leather mini baguette that looks really nice. But as of the standard, offerings from Fendi. I like the canvas mini baguettes more than the leather ones. So yeah, I'm keeping my eye out for that. That is it for handbags. And then moving on to kind of like, I want to say the miscellaneous category um, before we move on to the jewelry part, which I I think it's the most exciting part. Um, so miscellaneous items. So I guess I'll first talk about the Kelly belt um, from Hermes because that was on my wish list last year, and I can't remember if it was also on my wish list the year prior to that, but definitely towards the end of 2022, I did consider getting it when I saw the one that I wanted in stock online, and I totally regret not doing it. Ever since then, I would check the website once in a while, and it would never be in stock um, because I want one that has rose gold hardware, and I feel like that is harder to come by than like the ones in gold hardware specifically um and i'm only willing to purchase it online um i just don't have the patience i guess to be building a relationship with a sales associate in stores this is really the only item that i want from hermes so i highly doubt that a sales associate will really keep me in mind if one ends up you know being available in stores i really have to you know just test my luck by going to the stores and inquiring about it um so that's just not something i want to be doing it's so much easier to just try to browse at home and hope i get lucky and you know find it whatever i browse is there like a time that is best to check if you guys know any kind of like tips and tricks to scoring or mess items on their website definitely let me know because i i have no game plan right now i just check once in a while and yeah I've never seen it ever since back in 2022. And then the other thing in this miscellaneous category is another pair of Chanel ballet flats, but specifically I want one that is quilted. I just, I don't know. I feel like the quilted ones look slightly different on my feet than the ones that are non-quilted. I remember like when I bought my um, black quilted ballet flats years ago, I had tried on the quilted one as well as the non-quilted one. And I just preferred the quilted one so much more. The non-quilted one, I don't know. I feel like it wasn't as structured in a way. Um, so I didn't like that and over the years I have tried on like a couple pairs of the you know like non-quilted ones in various colors. I think aside from the tweed ones I just wouldn't get one that's not quilted but I have thought about the tweed ones and then I think about how it's like basically right up against the ground and you're going to get like a cloth pair of shoes that you can't exactly clean like you can sneakers. So yeah, I'm, I'm not so sure I want to be spending a thousand dollars on something like that. And I actually believe that usually they charge more for the tweed ballet flats than the leather ones. Um, don't know why that's the case because it's the opposite for bags. Anyways, that was a little bit of a tangent, but just to like bring it back to the topic of this video, let's talk about my jewelry wish list. Um, so it's actually quite varied. Um, I feel like in 2023, most of the jewelry pieces I bought were from Van Cleef and Arpaus, but I feel like I'm kind of like at a point where I have um enough from there i feel like maybe i wouldn't be saying this um if i was willing to get their earrings but just some things happened last year and i basically ultimately decided that van cleef and earrings just aren't in the cards for me um so that kind of like 
took off a chunk of my Kylie <laughs> Better Pals um, wish list. So there is still one item that I want from there and this was not something that was on my radar until my sales associate um, just kind of like told me to try on the magic um, Alhambra necklace in the onyx um, in white gold and I tried it on and I was like this actually looks really nice. I didn't want that specific one but I kind of got to thinking like I would probably really like this in the gray mother of pearl and rose gold but that is something that is never in stock in stores but still I thought that if I were to get the magic alhambra necklace I would go for that gray mother of pearl and rose gold one until towards the end of last year I went into the store and I tried on two more of the magic alhambra necklace I tried on the malachite one which I just didn't care for whatsoever um, and I also tried on the Chalcedony one, which I absolutely loved. And after trying the Chalcedony one on, I was no longer sure that I wanted the Great Mother of Pearl. It's a very hard decision to make when you don't have all the options like in front of you to look at, but you guys let me know which one would you prefer between those two options. And then since we're on the topic of necklaces, I haven't even gotten around to trying this necklace on in stores. Um, but based on the photos that I've seen online, it is totally up my alley and it's from Graf. It's um, their mini butterfly pave station necklace something along those lines that might not be the exact name for it um but i'll show a picture of it up on the screen so you know what i'm talking about and prior to last year um station necklaces were never on my radar but last year i got the 16 motif um sweet alhambra long necklace from van cleef and her pals that i tend to wear um wrapped around twice on my neck kind of like at a choker length and I really, really, really love that necklace. I wore it so much. And that got me to thinking that I wanted another necklace that kind of had like multiple motifs, um, but I didn't think I needed something that necessarily like wrapped around twice like that necklace. Um, so I kind of started looking around and I stumbled across this one from Graf and I just thought it was so stunning. Um, I have the Tiffany um, Diamonds by the Yard um, pendant, like the single um, pendant, the single diamond pendant. Um, and I know they sell kind of like station necklaces at Tiffany's too. I never really considered it, nor did I consider, you know, like anything that looked the same but wasn't from Tiffany's. But something about this one from Graf, just because instead of like round diamonds, it's like little butterfly motifs, just made it so much more intriguing to me and yeah i just i don't know i think i would really love this even though i've never like tried it on or anything i definitely need to go try this on i'm not going to just purchase it online but i'm pretty certain that i'm still going to want this necklace after trying it on um this definitely is not a piece that i'm going to be getting this year i'm not prioritizing it over some of the other items that i've talked about and will talk about in this video so yeah that's probably a 2025 thing and another item that i probably won't check off of my wish list until 2025 is from tiffany's it's their drop earrings from their knot collection and I think this is just such a stunning pair of earrings to wear for like special occasions but I know for certain that I'm not going to get that much wear out of this so definitely not something that I'm going to be prioritizing either um, and that has kind of changed because I always wanted something from the knot collection um, I actually thought it would be um, a ring at first but then yeah these earrings are just too stunning and i think it kind of like shows off that knot design way better than a ring does and then there's one more piece of fine jewelry from these kind of like designer brands um that i want before i move on to some other pieces so i think i talked about this last year too um, if not the specific piece, then definitely something from this collection. So it's the Clash collection from Cartier. Um, now the item that I want is the necklace, um, the small version of the necklace. 
um, without any diamonds on it. And then that's it for all of the fine jewelry that I want from these kind of like designer luxury brands. And then I want to talk about two bracelets that I'm actually having custom made right now. One of them, I basically want it to look like um, my wedding band, but basically in a bracelet form. Um, my wedding band is basically um, like a shared prong um, wedding band. So there's like one prong um, between each diamond. And I just like how it kind of like um, really keeps that round shape of the diamonds and there's not like too much metal around it so i wanted kind of like the matching bracelet so i'm having that custom made and then the other um bangle bracelet that i'm having custom made is actually inspired by a bracelet that i saw on someone's instagram it was kind of like love at first sight i just thought this design was so unique with those kind of like alternating triangular shapes and I did figure out where they got their bracelet from, but I didn't want that exact one. I basically wanted to make a few tweaks to it. Um, specifically, I didn't want it to be so metal heavy, and I also wanted the diamonds to go like all around the bracelet. Um, so I decided to go the custom route for this, and I'm so excited to get both of these bracelets. Um, I think it should be soon, but um, I don't know if I mentioned um, the shared prong bangle. Um, that one I'm getting made in platinum to match my wedding band, and then this one I'm getting in rose gold. So those are the two types of metals that I wear. So yeah, having one of each, I think I'm um, set in like the diamond bracelet category. Um, and then moving back to earrings, I want to add more rose gold earrings to my collection. So I do have a lot of rose gold pieces and I will say I have four pairs of rose gold earrings, but two of the four are in floral designs. One of those two is only a pair that I wear in the spring and summer months. So. I feel like there are um, pieces of rose gold jewelry that I have that, I don't know, like when I want to wear just one color of metal, sometimes I struggle to find the right earrings to go with them. So I basically want to have more options, right? Um, and I want some more options that, not that they have to be like simple diamond studs, but even if there's kind of like a design pattern to it, um, not something that looks like so obvious, um, like a flower, for example. So actually the other like two pairs of rose gold earrings that I have are from Idol. Um, one is their diamond studs and the other is a pair of their add-ons. So I kind of want to build on that, get some more add-ons to change the look. Um, so the one that I have my eye on currently is their Jill add-on. This video isn't sponsored by them in any way whatsoever. Jill add-on is actually like a fairly new one that they've released and I basically fell in love with it like once I saw it. Um, so that's kind of like where my head is at um, for the next pair of rose gold earrings to add to my collection. Probably there's going to be more to come after that um, since, like I said, I do wear a lot of rose gold jewelry. And the last item on this list is actually a little bit of a wild card um, because I've never owned anything like this before and it's an ear cuff. So I don't know, I think it has to do with the fact that I got this like hardware necklace from Tiffany's recently and it's definitely like a little bolder, a little bit more edgy. And yeah, like I kind of feel like I want to like play around with my jewelry a little bit more. Definitely the ear cuff I intend on wearing with this because I feel like it's the same type of vibe. The one that I'm eyeing is also from Idol. It's their power ear cuff. I only have like one ear piercing um, per ear. Um, and sometimes I do feel like that is a little bit limiting with like what kind of like earrings I could wear. I see some people that have like, just like so many pairs of earrings on at the same time. And I think that how they kind of like curated that just looks really nice, but I am a scaredy cat. 
I don't want to get any more piercings like the ones that I have currently I got them when I was a child and according to my mom um, I just really wanted earrings so badly that I didn't care about the pain um, but now I feel like I wouldn't mind it um, so you know basically if I want to kind of like spice up the jewelry on my ears um the non painful way to go about it is to get like an ear cuff it definitely is really really out of my comfort zone i mean even this necklace is a little bit out of my comfort zone too but i am really glad that i got this because i've been wearing this so much and i've been really enjoying it so hopefully it's the same thing with the ear cuff and <laughs> maybe that's kind of like the push i need to kind of like finally get myself to get a few more piercings i don't know who knows that's definitely something that i'll decide like down the line um but anyways this is everything that is on my 2024 luxury wish list do you guys have any of the same items on your wish list or like what items do you have on your own luxury wish list? Let me know in the comments down below. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do give it a thumbs up if you did. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do consider subscribing for lots more content on luxury handbags, jewelry, and fashion coming up. And I'll leave two videos on the screen for you to watch next. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.